Just browsing the beautiful artwork here. I love this piece, but I am on a hunt for Adam. Hey Chandler, I'm, I'm over here. Adam? It's a great day for a full moon. Oh! <laughs> I guess I have to buy this one now. Let's go find Ginger, see what she has in store for us today. Hi, I'm Adam Hegstead, chef and restaurateur in the, in the Northwest. I'm all about the people because that's what hospitality is built on. Hi, I'm Chandler Baird, local foodie and lifestyle influencer at Spokane Eats. I'm all about highlighting our local eateries and the communities that support them. Crave TV is a telling of stories through visiting the places and restaurants, meeting the people who make it happen, and talking to the chefs who help create this amazing industry. This is Crave TV. Fun things about this space is Train has a program called Creative Enterprise Business Incubator Program for Artists. And so the special thing is that we get to share this space with one of our Creative Enterprise participants, oh, Ashley, okay. um, who opened the Center for Children's Book Arts. Um, so oh, cool. um, in addition to like a highly curated, beautiful um, bookstore for children, there's also a workshop space back there um, mm -hmm. that she does workshops for kids every Saturday for free. Um, so it's super exciting and then we also share that space um, to do workshops as well. So Oh my gosh, who knew? Yeah. So you can just sign your kids up online, I'm assuming? Yes, exactly. Okay, and then bring them in. What kind of workshops? Um, so it's a little bit of everything. So Ashley's bringing in local artists to teach um, children um, various kinds of art mediums. So there's painting, there's printmaking. Oh Ashley is a printmaker herself, so these cards are hers as okay. well. Um, incredibly talented, just beautiful yeah. human being. And the books here are just one of the things so that fun. she really um, cares deeply about is um, beautiful images and specifically from diverse perspectives and voices um, and then beautiful stories. So every single book in here is just, again, I, I've said it, yeah. highly curated. It's a gorgeous yes. space. Oh, All the World. That's one of my favorite yeah. books to read to my daughter. It yeah. is so <laughs> sweet. Yeah, and there's also an opportunity there's um, little um, spots for like kids just to sit down and read with their parents. So it's Cute. exciting that you recognize that book. Yes, yeah. this is so fun. How did how did terrain start? What yeah, was the idea? yeah. So it's um, crazy to think, but it's been about 14 years ago. It was myself, um, my now husband, and three of our friends um, started what we thought was going to be a one night only, one time thing. Pop Surprise! Yeah. Those are how the best <laughs> businesses yes. start, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, essentially, we did what we now called our flagship event. Um, and really, the thinking behind that was. Um, there was this narrative, if you grew up in Spokane, and I don't know if you guys have heard this, that if um, you were gonna have fun in your 20s or be quote unquote successful, yeah. you were gonna do it anywhere but Spokane, Washington. Portland or Seattle. Yes, or exactly. Or yeah. So that created this like massive hemorrhaging of young and creative people for decades really yeah, in Spokane. Sure. And so that first event, um, we really wanted to A, show people that there's a community of, of artists and creatives here, B, um, pride a place. Like Spokane's an incredible place to live. Um, and one of the things that we saw is that there were all these really amazing pockets of creativity. Mm -hmm. They were just kind of siloed. Yeah. So our question to ourselves was like, what if we got all of those people together in one room for one even evening to see what would happen? And one I think part of it too is it wasn't like a professional yeah. space to show, yes. right? So yeah. like you had all of these indie artists that yep. are kind of doing working in a silo, yep. and there wasn't like a combined force yep. to yep. you know uplift them. Another question we were kind of asking ourselves. Um, was I think that there's this myth within the art world or people who want to engage in the art world that if you don't have an art degree or art history degree, oh, yeah. then you can't engage. Yeah. And that's absolutely not the case. Yeah. Um, so really you know, making a, a concerted effort to kind of break down those silos. So how many artists are in here right now? Yeah, so this is a group show. So we switch out shows monthly. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a group show. There are seven artists featured in this particular. The gallery is free. Please mm -hmm. come down and see us. And open to purchase anything, anything. that we see. Yep. Yeah. It, it really depends on, um, on the artist showing. So one of the wonderful things about this gallery is you'll see two-dimensional work, but you'll also see site-specific installations. You'll see sculptural mm -hmm. work. You'll mm -hmm. see a little bit of everything. So it's, sometimes it's for sale. Most of the time it's for sale, yeah. but sometimes it's not. Yeah, yeah. sometimes it's just display yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah unique and awesome. Yeah, but yeah. Chandler, I like where you were going. Come down and purchase art. Yeah. Come purchase Everybody. local art. Yeah. Support, yes. the, support the yes. people. Yeah. Yes, it's all for sale. That's how I should have said it. Yeah. And then tell me about the space. So you have these exposed brick walls. Yes. yes. 
And the beautiful ceilings. Yes. Thank you for asking. It was a lot <laughs> of hard work. But um, so when we got into this space, it had been a hair salon um, and it was actually a quite beautiful hair salon, but it just had a way different look. So um, we, this was a happy accident discovering the brick walls. Um, so we decided to expose them. There was oh, layers of drywall and plaster, mm -hmm. but it totally meant to be. And then we are so blessed to be in a historic building. It was built in 1904, has the original tin ceilings. Um, we actually worked with the Office of Historic Preservation Preservation in terms of our lighting and everything. Oh, cool. um, and that's, I think, one of the really special things about being in this space is being able to pay homage to mm -hmm. um, the past, but then bring well, the you're community. Kind of the Cracker Building, yeah, it's kind of the same exactly. feeling. So you're that's like bringing that here, right? Yes, right? Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and actually, even our space in the mall, one of the reasons that we decided to go into that, uh, into the mall in the first place, was because it was an older section. So we do have exposed mm. brick in, oh, cool. in, yeah. in that space as well. Um, so and yeah, tell us about that, that store from here. Yes, thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, um, so we um, train has does a little bit of everything in the community. One being we have a storefront inside River Park Square called mm -hmm. From Here. Um, we feature 110 um, artists, and it's ever growing. Um, we're open seven days a week, 365 days a year. It is the coolest store. Yeah. I always tell people yeah. go get like thank your you. gifts and everything yeah. Yeah, from sure. there because yeah. you're supporting local. Yeah. You're going to yeah. be at the mall anyways. Yep. And you're getting something unique that yeah. no one yeah. else is going to have anywhere yeah. else. You're getting something from here. Yeah, <laughs> and you're and you're also we laugh every time we say that yeah, too. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that art does, and you know, kind of going back to our previous conversation, is it gives you a glimpse into. It gives you the pulse of you know who is in this community yeah. so mm -hmm. for spoken nights or visitors alike being able to go into that store yeah. and being able to see the community through the artist's eyes is pretty special absolutely well and you're like showing off a little bit of authenticity you're just like yes. this is not just this is created through all of these people yes. this is a story of yep. everybody combined instead yep. of just like one person or one thing or yeah. one style or whatever it's funny you say that our hashtag is we all build this so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I believe like he knew that, I believe <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah and then outside of this space you do a couple events every year yep so we still do um, uh, our flagship event we are really excited to hopefully fingers crossed be bringing that back um, yeah. this year um, we do two large art markets every year um, one called Bazaar that just happens mm -hmm. um, recently, and then Burzar happens in the winter. Uh, for, oh yeah. <laughs> we thought we were very clever with that. Yes. Um, and then, um, so those are kind of our, 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 our big kind of events. We also do a partnership with the Spokane Symphony called Uncharted. Um, oh. We do special um, kind of side projects. Um, we uh, facilitated the Black Lives Matter mural. We're doing a project in East Central. Um, so a little bit of everything. Uh, we just also do a ton of advocacy work. Mm -hmm. um, we still have a long ways to go in terms of the economic support that our artists receive here mm -hmm. in this um, city. And so do a lot of advocacy work at the city, state, and federal level as well. Very yeah, cool. I, I appreciate how much conscious effort you guys put into all this. Thank this is you. not yeah. easy. This is a lot of work. It is a lot of wor yeah. hard work, and it's not for everybody. But how blessed am I to be able to be in community, um, not only with um, artists and makers, but you know Spokane at large on yeah. a daily basis. It's yeah. just I live a blessed life and do blessed work. So yeah. well, thank you so much for thank having you. us. Thank you so much for um, you know uh, your continued support. Um, and I just, again, um, believe really strongly in what the two of you are doing as well. Thanks. So thanks yeah. for everything yeah. that you're doing. We love, we love all of this. We all love this. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah, exactly. I'm so glad you guys are in this new space. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah really cool. Join us after the commercial break as we walk over to Chowderhead. Love this building. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, Chef? <laughs> Good. I'm Good. Travis from Chowderhead. Welcome in. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. What are you guys gonna do today? We're gonna cook some food. Yeah. I think uh, make a couple sandwiches, maybe some soups. All right. Rub it up, dub. Let's go cook some grub. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna make a cheese steak. Nice. Uh, we're gonna make a smoked smoked sealhead bagel. A couple sides, a couple soups. Salt. Salt. Yeah. What you, what's the what is the meat you got there? So we got some uh, thinly sliced sirloins. Got a little bit of nice. fat. We're gonna yeah. add uh, some cooked peppers and onions to it. Cool. Yeah, you can see all the marbling in there. Yeah, really look good. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. We got some sliced mushrooms here also. Cool. So that's just gonna be the inside of the sandwich. Then I got a little seasoning. That grill up a little bit. Yeah, right over here. This is just uh, salt and pepper and oregano and some garlic. That's like pretty classic. Pretty classic, yeah. So we'll just kind of let that hang out. 
Cool. And um, we'll get our bread going. We've got bagels, so cool. we're gonna do a smoked steelhead bagel also. Well, that's, I think that's cool you guys do breakfast here too. Yeah, it's really, we have a really small breakfast menu, but they're all really good yeah. and um, affordable and fast. And this so, bagel is amazing, I can't wait. I smoke fish once a week. I get uh, 25 pounds, uh, which is usually like two two big fish or yeah. three like medium sized yeah. fish. And so, yeah, I'll just, I'll just clean those and take the bones out and brine them up and smoke them. So, and that'll last me about a week yeah, with cool. all the soup we make and, and this dish. Oh, yeah, and chowder. Like yeah, that's cool. yeah. Probably ready to go. I, I really like the food you guys are making here. It's so good. I can tell that you guys put a lot of love into it. Thank you. It's yeah, delicious. we we try to keep it really simple and like, keep it really approachable. And, like you know, not really try and really You're don't try like, to make super good. Food. Yeah, Sorry, I don't really, I don't really dress anything up very much. Yeah. I just like yeah. trying to make it, try to make it good. And yeah, I think if, if I think it's good, then hopefully everybody else does too. It's, Kind of you guys do the burger specials? What, tell me about that. Yeah, so I do a burger special every Thursday, and um, it's usually a smash burger. Sometimes it's a fried chicken sandwich and not a burger at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, people have just been like responding really well to that. It's always different. That is definitely an item that's always kind of classed up. It's kind of always got some ridiculous stuff on it. And, I think that's why people like it, and now people kind of like wait to see, yeah, yeah. you know, what the Thursday burger is going to be. So, yeah. so that's kind of a fun thing that, that we do too. For like a couple weeks ago, and it was it was so good. Yeah, we got some just regular American cheese. We're going to put on top of that, and just like halfway melt it. Cool. Yep. And we can get that uh, bagel rolling. That bagel rolling. So we just do a little bit of cream cheese both sides. Like you have the whipped cream cheese. Yeah, it's 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 so much Melty, easier. Melty, soft spread. Yeah, it's easier yeah. to spread, and you don't have to temper it. And yeah, it's cool. We'll do some smoked steelhead on the bottom. Yeah, it looks good. You kind of do a cold smoke on that. Yeah, you exactly. like here, you like here on it. Yeah, I, I usually brine it overnight. Okay. In a salt and sugar brine, okay. and uh, I'll smoke it for about three hours. Okay. And kind of, kind of like halfway smoke it, and yeah. then it, it kind of carries over to be like a cooked product. Okay. So. Yeah, you can so, tell it looks like perfect. perfect yeah, so like, it's not totally just like it's absolutely not dry. dry. It's like nice it is and not noise. dry at all. Yeah. It's still got all the fat in there. Yeah. It's just really, really good and tender. So we'll do some pickled red onions. I like to put the capers on the top so they don't go anywhere. It's like a stick. Yeah. You know? Got some fresh herbs blend. This is uh, chives. Oh, yeah parsley and fresh dill, dill. and I, just, I, love, that dill. I love fresh dill so much so I kind of had to have a be part of that but that uh that's well, kind of like a lot of like simple things put together in ways like meaningful you know it's like thought thought through looks really good all right and then so I got some I got some infused oil right here we also do some of that right on the top infused with what, uh garlic oh nice okay and this is the bottom part and I put the top part on just like that. Beauty. And now we should be ready to go on this cheese stick. Yeah. So we kind of like halfway melt the cheese so you can still see it. Yeah. And you just kind of scoop it up and just put nice. it in there. Nice. Like, and that's it. And, oh, that's and actually we uh, we put the fresh herb blend on this on this too. Oh cool. And when I made it, I just thought it needed something green on it, so yeah. it was totally like an afterthought. Yeah. But people actually like are really into yeah. it. Yeah, like, oh, I've, never had a, I've never had a cheese stick that's got dill on it. It's really good. You know? <laughs> so, fresh elements there. Yeah. All right, we got some food for you over here. Ooh, I love when you do that. Fabulous. It was, it what did y'all? Yeah, I'm sure. You were super Travis, busy back there. I watched there. Travis cook it up. <laughs> okay, what'd y'all make? So I made the smoked steelhead chowder, smoked steelhead bagel, and the cheese steak. And I chose these three because that's my favorite soup, and that's my favorite breakfast item, and that's like everybody's favorite sandwich. So those are the three we made. Safe you can smell bed. like it you smells. Can... It smells delicious. Oh, I smell like so much dill and yeah, deliciousness. Yeah. yeah. There's dill on everything. All three of these. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magic seed. Yeah, yeah, all it, three it is so good. So yeah, I, I kind of use a lot of it. Oh yeah. my gosh. So okay, tell me about like how you started this. Your story. Uh, so I was uh, I was here working for Chef Tony Brown when this was Mick Ruins, uh -huh. and um, he had a real skeleton crew. But I was kind of like full time, kind of like running like the back and, and stuff. So that he he kind of just asked me if I'd be interested in taking over this this space as my own restaurant. He's like, I think you're kind of ready to do it. Okay. Would you know? Would you be into that? And so so we just kind of worked out a deal, and um, I 
redid some stuff in the in the space and made a menu and yeah yeah and I just, just went for it yeah because I mean I just I th like I was here during the day a lot and I did see just like people from the courthouse and people from like the public defender and there's yeah. just people like walking around all oh, the yeah. time yeah. so looking for food yeah so I was like okay like I need to do a lunch concept yeah and you know keep it like really simple keep it like quick pretty quick service and and fresh and totally scratch made and and people have responded really well. Well, I think you're doing a really good job of like just showcasing delicious food. I mean, it's yeah. like we're saying in the back, it's just stuff that you want to eat. Yeah. And I think that's how you become, you know, that's how you make a great restaurant. It's just mm -hmm. simple food done, you know, really well. Really well. Mm -hmm. You're focusing on a lot of the ingredients and then just putting it together in a way that's delicious. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm so glad this is something that Spokane totally needed. It's great to go somewhere and get a soup sandwich, like yeah. hang out at lunch, especially in this area. Yeah. So we're super excited to have you guys. And let's get in. Uh, let's do this, yeah. I'm like, can we stop talking and start eating? <laughs> Join us after the commercial break where we're gonna head over to Indaba. How's it going, guys? Hi, Bobby, how are you? Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, you yeah, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go talk some coffee. Let's All do right. it. Yeah. Let's get to business. Well, so why here? Like, why, why do you do what you do? Well, I originally started in Daba to uh, create just a gathering place where everyone can come and, and be. And so our mantra is love people, love coffee. You'll see it like yep. on our cups and, on, um, and everything. But uh, really, especially coming out of our, the current season of cultivating connection is kind of our current focus. Uh -huh. So it's like, how are we cultivating connection with our community, with our guests, even like our coffee farmers, our vendors, and like, and so cultivating connection is kind of like our current focus of how are we rebuilding community and building community every day, getting to know people's names, connecting yeah. with them, and just how Helping vital and important that is in yeah. like our society as it becomes more digital yeah. and yeah. disconnected and everything. And so, and you're really, yeah. truly very good at that, like yeah. well, connecting and you <laughs> yeah. are. Yeah. Creating a community hub and kind of help build that. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, and I love connecting people. Like, yes. like people are kind of blown away when I jump on bar and I'm making drinks and, and I'm like, oh, hey, Adam, you should meet Chandler. Yeah, or, you yeah. know, like, or you should meet. And just seeing like nonprofits created out of our place because people are connecting with the same heart and vision to totally. uh, go to Uganda, for example, like Mama, like they now they provide medical assistance in Uganda. Didn't exist like oh three years gosh. ago. So, like, just being that community space where people can connect and network and downtown, especially here, you see a lot of entrepreneurs. Uh, yes. We're right next to all the banks, and yeah. so yeah. meeting with bankers and lenders and entrepreneurs and angel investors, and like s having different energy and fun and, to like uh, eavesdrop yeah. on conversations. I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> super fun. Yeah, and I have like plenty of ideas, like I was just sharing, you know, yeah, like different things yeah. too. But I, I think that that coffee shops like are such a vital, important part of every neighborhood and community. Absolutely. And so, so my heart and my vision is to yeah continue to to grow and and open up coffee shops in neighborhoods that need a coffee shop and need that catalyst for community and yeah. connection. Cool. So tell us uh, on that note, so you live in West Central, that's kind of like your community. home base. Love yes. that. Yes. So I mean that kind of goes along the same lines of building that community up and then you've kind of tell me about all your locations. Yeah, so I started originally in West Central uh -huh. and like I said earlier, like I have my our home is there, our kids are there, our chickens are there. Like we <laughs> like we've made it our home. Yeah. And that's what we want to do on our different neighborhoods. So we have this downtown location, it's uh -huh. its own community, its own neighborhood, its own vibe, you know? And so having bringing in a store manager or a store leader who can really like embrace that embrace yeah. that vision yeah. of like we're building community. Yeah. And so we and then we uh, have one in Tri Cities now. And we were lucky that we were able to purchase a location that was already specialty coffee and already had eight years of community building. Oh, so nice. I actually had to go down and get get to know the community. It was already there. Yeah. Like Paul comes in every day, gets his drip coffee, sits at the yeah. bar, and like oh, you know, that. and it's just and we just celebrated his 75th birthday like oh, at the coffee gosh. shop. Like so, it was really cool to be able to perpetuate what was already there and continue that for them. And then now we're opening a shop in Yakima. So it's that same idea, like getting to know that community. What are the cool things yep. that are going on in that community that we can help be a catalyst to grow and be a space where people can connect and, 
Uh, it's about so much yeah. more than coffee, I feel like, with you. It really is. is. Yeah. What makes it so special? Yeah. So it's this really cool community around especially coffee, but then other people just around food or mm -hmm. just having a place and a space. And, yeah. and we need that so much, just a place where oh, we can yeah, connect. yeah, we do, especially now. And I feel like it gives you a greater purpose too, because mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. there's so much more than just the coffee and Beyond just what you're serving. serving yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. so Indaba's been this, and we call them Indaba moments where we have those like, coincidences but like these divine moments where uh -huh. you run into somebody or that person connects to somebody or whatever whether it be your future husband or wife or yeah. your future uh, you know business partner or whatever but these Indaba moments like are really cool and um, and I always kind of joke it's like I don't make a lot of money but like I get to create a lot of amazing experiences and memories and Legacy, yeah. Legacy of, totally. yeah. So the Scosa recipe is two shots of espresso, simple syrup, ice, shaken, topped with milk. Okay. So I'm gonna put my simple syrup in the shaker. We're making a 16, so I'm gonna do uh, 30 grams of syrup. And you guys make your syrups in house, right? We make some of them in house. Yeah. We make our butterscotch, our lemon vanilla, our simple syrup, uh, our lavender, so yeah. So some popular. seasonal, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna put the double shot the okay. simple syrup, oh, and then I'm gonna so add good. some ice. Okay. The lid for the shaker. Oh, baby. All right, and you wanna shake it? Let's do it. It's on there, so just bring there it over right your head. Around me? Okay. Yep. There you go. For a couple seconds. Nice. Good? Yeah, that's great. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then yeah, I'll let you do that part. Sometimes you gotta hit it to get it off. There we go. Fired. Okay. And it gets nice and foamy, and then we're gonna oh, put it yeah. in the glass ah. here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then just top it with some milk. Yeah, go ahead this if you want to. Okay. Can have Tell the me when. Yeah. Just top it up to the top of the glass there. Woo! Right on. <laughs> and that's a scoso. That is beautiful. Right. Is this one of your favorites? It's one of my favorites, especially in the summertime. It's a good refreshing drink, and uh, oh, yeah. it's one of our house favorites. Yeah. So oh, one of man. our more popular. So, yeah. Well, thank so, you yeah, for showing me the ropes. Absolutely. Next time we'll. Try something different. I'm yeah. like such an amateur with this stuff, <laughs> so seeing you do that was really, really cool. It's a lot of fun. And now we'll go see if Adam likes it. All right, I did the hard work for you this time. Yeah, I was just busy eating. It's fine. <laughs> Here's a scoso, okay. which is some shaken espresso with a little simple syrup, right? Yep. Uh -huh. And this is our uh, lemon vanilla matcha. So just got a house made lemon vanilla syrup, and then we use uh, Smith Tea's matcha out of Portland. Yeah. And it is. Just super it's delicious. Beautiful. And a little lemon right. peel on top. Pastiano. All right, thanks so much for having Thank us. Thank you. Cheers. You bet. Thanks for coming out, guys. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Crave TV. Yeah. Join us next week for more.